Hi all, been a long time. Um, I thought I'd give everyone a bit of an update on what I've been up to and what's been happening uh, as I've been very, very quiet on social media. Um, and being quiet on social media for a number of reasons. One, I'm very, very busy and I haven't got time to do a bit of everything. So I'm gonna do it all in a bit of a short video stroke nutshell thing. Um, so where do I start first? Um, I'm currently building a eight plank open in seven and a quarter for somebody. I can't really show you too much about that because I want to keep it all a bit of a secret until it's finished. Um, I can show you that bit. And that's one of the buffers um, there that I've just done. Laser cut head there. Profiled it front and back after it's been soldered onto that part. The actual uh, stem that the spring sits on, um, which I don't seem to have to hand because it's a bit in the dark. Anyway, spring sits in here and that slides in, and then I've put a drill through the bottom end here for a split pin that'll hold it all in place. Um, so that's the last one. I can't show you the others because they're already in place and they're in the wagon and I don't want to show off the wagon. So that's one thing I've been working on is this eight planker. Um, RCH design, but it's going to be sign written on the side and everything like that. You may have seen um, on the wagon works page that I've been sign writing my um, King's Coal wagon. Um, that's come to a bit of a stall at the minute doing the second side um, just because I want the kind of the right space I want to be in the right mind uh, frame of mind to do it and stuff like that and um, the other thing I did um, if you don't know or you may know or you may not know um, I've got I've finished off my dad's seven and a quarter home side um, as a side tank engine to represent a bit of a LNER stroke GCR engine um, when I f originally did the rods in my infancy in doing model engineering, I did a mist drill, <coughs> which is easily done. Um, doing that mist drill um, created a tight spot in the motion and a lot of to and fro and head scratching and all the rest of it. I narrowed it down, managed to sort it out, um, drew upon, because I'm, I'm getting better at drawing on, uh, on CAD now on the computer drew up a template, a rod template, uh, and fitted it to the engine on both sides on the uh, leading wheels, because obviously the trailing wheels has got the gudgeon, uh, not the gudgeon pin, um, the gradient link in there, so the, the trailing rods again was kind of a bit of a it missive uh, measuring and stuff like that, but I managed to get some pointers for my vernier and managed to measure the wheel centres accurately, which gave me a better centre then, I had a test rod done fitted that on, uh, rolled the engine with those test rods on and it rolled perfectly. So that gave me then the opportunity to um, draw up a correct shape rod that I wanted and um, to suit the engine. So instead of like on the home side drawings, they're squared uh, ends to the rods where the actual um, driving pins are in the driving wheels, where the pins are, crank pins, they're square ended to represent the type of shunting engine that it was. Um, I didn't want that with this, I wanted it to do to look like the engine that I was representing with its side tanks, everything like that. Um, so what I had done um, from Ed, a model engineer's laser, he had them water cut for me. They're done to my drawings. Um, these are um, ready, will be, will be ready to go into the milling machine to have this part here uh, thinned from about there to about there. So instead of it being half inch thick all the way through, it'll be thinner here in this part, but that'll still be half inch there and half inch there. Um, oil cups will go in, um, bushes will go in. This will be milled correctly so that the uh, gradient link can go in. Um, and this is the training rod. So you see, they'll go together like so, and they'll go on the engine. So that's something else I've been working on. Um, so they've got to go into a milling machine at some point. Um, they won't go into mine because it's not here. And as you'll notice, 
there's a different type of setup behind me to my normal um, surroundings that's because I built an extension to my workshop uh, and what that's basically given me is a, another bench to do wagon building on so I can do all the machining in the machine shop and then bring out the machine parts and laser cut parts bring them out to this bench that I'm filming from here and assemble it um, it's a similar sort of size space but I've got a division between machine shop and assembly shop uh, in here there is wagons in different formats have been built um, and with it being a nice new space I've still got bits to finish I'm still gonna line it and insulate it and stuff like that um, but and you can hear by the wind howling it's trying to rip the roof off it already um, so yes yeah, so that's what I've been working on for those bits um, another one I've been doing I drew up as I said I'm a bit getting a bit better on the old CAD is that I don't know if you can see that without the light bouncing off it there you are so it's a representation of a Maunsell style wheel which had, it was a wooden wheel back in the day and it had um, rivets around it, or there were actually bolts that weren't rivets that went round it, um, around the rim and around the centre of the hub um, and it was it sandwiched it all together and then the, the rim was shrunk on and everything like that. Um, but I drew it up, because the um, corpse wagon, I've still got to do the chassis for it, and I thought, well, I, I need to do the wheels, and the wheels on it were a Maunsell style wheel. Um, and I wanted to, for a, a distance, I want someone to look at it and go, oh, has that got Maunsell wheels on it? Well, no, it hasn't. There's a machine from Solid, but it looks like it. So I did that drawing. I'm not going to put the rivets in the, in the centre or the bolts in the centre, um, just because you're not really going to see them behind the axle box as it's rolling along, or even when it stood still. Um, but I had... I got some from M Machine, M Machine up in up north. Um, I got some slices, one inch slices of EN8. Um, this was ages and ages and ages ago. Anyway, long story short, my lathe packed, my lathe motor packed up on the big lathe. Um, I managed to get the motor off, clean it all out. Um, and one thing that happened just before the lathe packed in is I had a slice of EN8 in the machine. Um, and that was just to face it off and dress it up, make it all um, flat and round and everything like that, to the correct diameter of the flange diameter of the wheel. Uh, so what I did is, the first job when I got the motor back on was to basically finish cleaning up this uh, billet of steel. Uh, this slice um, and then take it out of the lathe then I could get on with buffer heads and other machining jobs that I needed to do. One thing led to another and I carried on working on it carried on working it until I came out with that. So you can see there without the light bouncing off it too much you can see the rivet detail in it um, and obviously it's been profiled and everything so this one is effectively ready to be put onto an axle um, I've the reason I've painted it already before I squeeze it onto the axle is I don't want the rust to attack it and at the minute the temperature outside is fluctuating so much one minute it's minus degrees and then the next minute it's plus 13 and you think well and machines and steel as you know is your home workshop unless you can keep your workshop at exactly the same temperature all year round, which I can't, um, it rust will start. So I have to go through a process of prepping everything to stop it, the rust from attacking stuff. So that is why that is painted and finished in black already. Um, it's a big old lump and all. Um, but yeah, it started off at 25 mil thick, so an inch thick. And I've taken it down to seven and a quarter standard gauge and I used those because if it was true size it'd be thinner than it is and the reason it's wide as it is what I can work out and from talking on um, Facebook with other people is it's wider because of track different standards um, if they go out of gauge if they're not checked for gauge or whatever it allows a bit more on the tread 
to take up for the bad track. Now, if I wasn't going to take the corpse wagon anywhere, I'd probably thin them down a bit more and take them to, instead of them being 21 mil across the tread, I'd take them down to 90 mil across the tread. Um, which would bring them in line to about 5 8, just about, thereabouts. Um, bringing it down to that narrow, it then becomes what I would class as a replica of full size. <laughs> um, but again, got to worry about gauging and stuff like that. I get why it's gone a bit wider. Um, but if you wanted it true scale, you would take it a bit thinner and hope to God that any track you visit all over the country or all over the world for that matter is that their track is spot on and it's not going to drop in or, or try and jump the track, spread the track or whatever. Normally it would be dropping in because that means that their track's gone out of gauge and the wheels aren't, haven't got the, the width of tread to allow for that fluctuation. Um, so there we are. I think that brings us up to date. Um, oh, the other one I'm just working on, let me just move this bag of wood. The other one I'm working on, this is a bit of an old dusty old relic at the minute. Ah, and that's that, you can see that. It's got a grey roof and planked floor. The end still needs to be painted. Um, and what I'm doing with that, that is part of a ride on container wagon um, that'll be sign written up with um, LNER along the side of it I'm going to put some strapping on it so it doesn't just look like a box on wheels um, it's going to have LNER um, containers and bicycles and you know not the actual silhouettes of bicycles but the word bicycles on it um, the, contain the container itself should be a bit longer but what I did is I made it out of um, offcuts. So I made the body out of offcuts and it's just something for somebody to sit on in a rake of wagons and it's different. It's just something that's different. I could have painted it really, could have take, uh, painted it all brown and done it as an actual small container on a flat wagon. Um, but I fancied something different and I had some blue left over. So that's why that's gone blue. Um, but the other side and the ends need to be painted yet still. So there we go, I think that's brought everything up to date. So again, I am sorry that I've not um, been online and not been chirping and stuff. I've still got outstanding customer stuff, a lot of it. I'm trying to get through it. Um, the reason for creating this space is to give me more space to get on with stuff. Um, but you can only do so much. I still have to work um, full time. I still have a job to do, um, which takes up a lot of my time. Um, and you've got, you know, just life in general gets in the way. So, you know, we just have to fit it all in somewhere around that. Um, I saw a lot of people getting on the case of another um, model engineer that does stuff for for other people um, and he's a one-man band you know he's got his own workshop he has a family and ridiculing somebody on Facebook isn't the way to go so if somebody's not answering their phone or they're not answering the messages there might be a reason for it um, you know just bear with them I'm sure that they'll get through the million and one things that people have to get through um, but as I say ridiculing them on Facebook isn't the way to go and it's a bad thing for the hobby so you know just think before you act so yeah thanks very much for tuning in I um, I hope to do more videos for you guys um, of progress on actual building stuff and making stuff like we did before um, I think it's about a year ago we actually did a how-to video on making something for a wagon but let me get these wagons cleared up that I've got on um, I wait the big reveal on this eight plank. It's gonna be stunning. There's no two ways about it. Um, and then obviously the chassis for the corpse wagon that will get done. Might do some how-to videos on that. Just because 
we built the chassis before, but we didn't put it on wheels. So, watch this space. I'll see you soon. Take care.